Information defense staff here. It's been 18 days since the war started. Our armed forces are stopping the advances of the enemy from all directions. At night, the occupiers shot missiles at targets at the Yavoriv military training ground in the Lviv region. 35 people died, 134 were taken to hospital. This training ground is located almost on the border with Poland and on the border with NATO. Earlier, NATO Secretary General Ian Stoltenberg responded to threats by Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Repkov about being ready to attack NATO convoys in Ukraine. Such an attack will be perceived exclusively in the light of an attack on the alliance with the all, all the accompanying circumstances, NATO said. In Irpin, the occupiers shot to death a foreign journalist, Brent Renault. However, the New York Times denied that the reporter worked for them. The information is now being clarified. Another journalist has been wounded. He is currently in the, capi- in the hospital in the capital. The journalist tried to film the evacuation of citizens from Irpin, but having crossed the checkpoint near the bridge, they were under fire. Brent Renault was wounded in his neck. Nine people died as a result of an air raid on Mykolaiv. In the region, in the town of Bashtanka, Several residential buildings have been destroyed. The number of victims is currently being clarified. In Chernihiv, one person died as a result of an airstrike on a residential building. The occupiers have created a fake humanitarian crisis in some Ukrainian cities. Mariupol citizens have been in a complicated situation for 12 days already. There is no electricity, water, or heating in the city. Almost no cell phone connection. They are running out of food and water. 90 tons of humanitarian aid have almost reached the city, but the occupiers won't allow to bring the aid into the city. In his speech today, Pope Francis called the actions of the Russian army during the siege and bombing of Mariupol barbaric. At least 100 bombs have been dropped on the city so far today. Based on the latest data, 2,187 Mariupol residents have fallen victim to Russian Nazis. There has been news about the usage of white phosphorus munitions in the town of Popasna in the Luhansk region. Uh, These munitions are banned by international agreements. In the south, the occupiers are trying to gain foothold in the occupied territories. The mayor of Melitopol, Ivan Fedorov, has been detained by the occupiers for three days already. The occupiers appointed Halena Danilchenko, a deputy of the city council from Opezege, a fake mayor. The occupiers have also kidnapped Dniprorudny mayor Yevhen Matveyev. In Melitopol, the Russian occupiers kidnapped the head of the district council, Sergei Prima. Despite everything, indefinite rallies against the Russian occupiers are taking place in Kherson, Berdyansk, and Melitopol. On to the activities of European solidarity. 20 tons of humanitarian aid from basketball club Ternopil were brought to Podolsk volunteer headquarters of the Odessa region. In Poltava, volunteers have been distributing food to IDPs. Our volunteer centers continue to operate in all regions of Ukraine. European Solidarity Faction and the Kiev City Council today participated in an extraordinary meeting and supported important decisions for the capital under martial law. In particular, the Kiev City Council has increased the reserve fund of the city budget meant for defense needs of the capital. All decisions have been approved by the deputies unanimously. The European Solidarity Faction in Verkhovna Rada is calling on the president to sign laws to combat collaborators and Russian propaganda. On to the good news. The occupiers have lost more than 12,000 troops. This figure hasn't changed for several days now, but the military emphasizes that it is very difficult to count when the enemy remains on the same border lines. The occupiers have also lost 374 tanks, 1,226 armored combat vehicles, 74 aircrafts, 86 helicopters, and three warships. 
Meanwhile, the United Kingdom is considering a possibility to use the seized property of Russian businessmen to place refugees. The national team of Ukraine has completed its performance at the 13th Paralympic Winter Games in Beijing. Ukrainian athletes won 29 medals, 11 gold, 10 silver and 8 bronze medals. As a result, the Ukrainian athletes secured a second position in the overall ratings, and this is the absolute record of our team in the history of the Paralympics.